So a little bit of history. Uh, the data protection and privacy uh, techniques has been researched since 1850 in the United States when the United States Census Bureau started to remove the personal uh, data from the public available census about United States citizens. So uh, nowadays everybody knows that the internet is full of data and roughly nearly 36% of that data is related to medical or healthcare system and nearly 25 to 26% of that data is related to fintechs, economy, e-commerce, bank transactions, and stuff like that. So uh, regarding this, in, th in that data is a lot of pers our personal data. So regarding this, uh, privacy regulations such, such as the GDPR and CCPA have uh, strict regulations to provide a strong protection to that kind of personal data. So techniques for data anonymization will enable business and public administrations to adhere to these regulations and protect uh, that data for misuse or abuse. So what is the importance of the uses of the anonymized data? Uh, let's put an example. Uh, let's say that a hospital needs to share uh, some kind of, uh, of their patient's data in order to carry on a, a research and a medical study, so this data should must be anonymized in order to protect the patient's uh, privacy. That will be include uh, anonymize his names, uh, bank accounts, ethnicity, uh, sex. So, as I said, the data anonymization seeks to protect private and sensitive data by deleting or encrypting identifiable information. The data anonymization is done for the purpose of protecting an individual's or a company uh, private activities while maintaining the integrity of the data gathered and shared. So the anonymized data, when it's shared, should be uh, keep it, uh, the, his whole integrity and only uh, anonymize the, the, the data that should be sensible. Uh, sensitive, yeah, that's the yeah. So the, the data anonymization is also known as data obfuscation, data masking, or data de identification. The GDPR uh, splits the in special categories of personal data, follow these categories for confidential attributes. Belief, uh, such as religious or philosophical belief, politics, political opinions, trade union membership, sex, sexual orientation or sex life, ethnic, racial, or ethnic origin, health, health, energy, and biometric data. This also includes uh, sensitive, sensitive health-related habits, such as substance abuse, and not conf, that is uh, not confidential information, in this case, most of the entities. So the, the MPA project, uh, which some of you have heard before about the MPA project? Okay, <laughs> my favorite, okay. MPA project is the acronym of Multilingual Anonymization for Public Administrations. The ultimate goal of the MPA project is to develop and provide a fully solution for multilingual anonymization kit based on name entity recognition. Most of you for sure are familiar with the name entity recognition. And this name entity recognition should be a applicable for all the European Union languages, including those uh, languages on the resource, such as Latvian, Lithuanian, Croatian, Slovenian. And this kit will not only restrict it only to European names or surnames, but also for most common names in all European Union countries. And with a connection to e-translation, irrespective of whether the text is monolingual, bilingual, or with mixed languages. This toolkit actually should be able to detect personal data, as I said before, name, addresses, email, credit cards, bank accounts, between others. Moreover, this toolkit will be able to anonymize this data. Thus, it will help uh, public administrations to comply with GDPR, particularly in the health and the legal fields. So these following names are only shown for the purpose to pro to proving uh, many European countries and enterprises and government collaboration within the, with the MPA project. Within there, there is Panjanic, it's a Spanish company that provides NLP solutions, adaptive machine learning translation, data masking and anonymization, and artificial intelligence powering, powered translation services. 
uh, tilde that provides translation services, a chatbot localization and space transcriptions. The European Language Resource Association, Evaluations and Language Resource Distribution Agency from France, and the University of Malta, of Malta, among others. So, so far, what has been achieved by the MPA project? They provide already Docker engines for anonymization in 24 European languages, the pre trained machine learning models for legal, legal clinical, public administration domains. Uh, the annotated data sets for name entity recognitions with nested entities. And there is also in currently a good approach out of these applications in the legal ministry of Spain. All of these resources by the MPA projects are currently available online, are open source, including the pre-trained models, the annotated data sets for all of the languages, and they also provide a, a demo online of, of how the, the anonymization works. So, uh, what is the anonymization in the GDPR context? In the Article 4 of the GDPR, it states that a personal data means any information related to an identif identifiable person or data subject that can be identified either by name, identification number, uh, location data, online identifier, such as emails, usernames, URLs to, to profiles and websites, uh, physical, physiological, genetic, mental, economical, cultural, or social identity data of a natural person. Also, the GDPR says that processing of personal data revealing racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, or philosophical belief for the purpose of uniquely identifying a natural person shall be prohibited. So, now uh, we will show you uh, some of the anonymization techniques and examples used within the MPA project and our company. So general techniques to anonymize data should be using gaps. It will be the translation of the recognized entities with uh, special characters, it should, can be underscores or full block of text, placeholders uh, using alphanumeric symbols with the similar length of the replaced the replace word entity, in this case to preserve the original format of the document. If you are anonymizing a Word document, for instance, or Excel, a spreadsheet, you should uh, maintain the format of that document. Using tags, using a predefin predefined tag that preserves the grammar information for this case, or using pseudonyms, the, is the replacement of an identity by another entity with, of the same type. For instance, we are seeing here uh, the example of using uh, these techniques. Uh, in the case of the sentence, Alves was working in Japan's GM earning two millions. Uh, actually, Albert, I think, was doing some kind of dirty business to earn that kind of money. <laughs> okay. Uh, using gaps, as you see, we identify uh, four uh, entities. Albert is a name, Japan is a country, a GM is an organization, and millions is quantity. Using gaps, we uh, like uh, straight through all the entities using placeholders. We uh, uh, replace the entity with, in this case, using the letter X with and the, using the same label of the entity recognized. Using tags, we uh, put the, the, the tag type and the entity type instead of the entity in that case. And using, in this case, pseudonyms, the, the sentence will be, John was working in Britain's BM earning for something. So we replace it completely using pseudonyms, the sentence. Well, in, in this world of machine learning and LLP and name entity recognition, most of you should be familiar with not everything is unicorn and rainbows. In the case of uh, name entity recognition, we face many problems, including linked entities. Uh, for instance, Keith Arthur is, could be split with title and name, in this case. Uh, Lord of the Ring, if you use that sentence in a name entity recognition, for a name entity recognition model, usually says that it's a title, and it's not, it's not a title, it's a word of art, a movie, a, a book. The ethnicity tags, the demonyms also, uh, for instance, let's put an example, uh, Dadwit, my company. If you said Dadwit is an American company, the most of the name entity recognition machine learning models which says that American, uh, it's, a, it's an adjective, and, and they not recognize American as a, an, an entity in this case. Th that is wrong. And also the addresses. The address is a really, really common problem because most of the countries write the address in a different way. 
So this is at glance the architecture of the Python anonymization toolkit. The first step of the flow is receive the non-structured private data as input, or so the data itself. Then we decompose that data in chunks. Uh, for instance, if we receive a whole document or a whole paragraph, we split that paragraph in sentences. Uh, after that, those sentences or chunks are uh, sent to the uh, artificial intelligence detection entities, in this case, the machine learning, the machine learning model. After that, we proceed to the replacement of the identities. As we saw before, we can use one of the techniques that I show you, GAP, pseudonyms. Then we create an index of the reversing. And that index is used by the, by the emissor of the anonymized data in order to have a technique to make the reverse engineering for the anonymization process. And after that, the anonymized data is sent to the client, to the final client itself. So which, which tools we use during the development of this Python toolkit? Uh, I like to call the Holy Trinity, the first API, Pydantic at Ubicorn. FAS API because we created a REST API for the Dutch ingestion, validation, anonymization of documents and text, a Pydantic for data validation and faster serialization, Ubicorn as a web application server, and also I strongly recommend this book from Francois Boron. It's called a Building Data Science Application with FAS API. It's a really, really nice book. There is the URL is in Amazon. I will share the the slides when we finish the talk. So with future expectation, we should expect us in the MAPA project as in that with as a company. We are trying to improve the MPA data sets for, for, for future public and private models, increase the, the data in legal and clinical domains, and also provide customized spacey models using deep learning with Think. I don't know if you are familiar with Think. It's from the creators of space itself and also cascade arrangements of NER models. Well, uh, which remarks we should have so far? Anonymization is a still a research area with too much without too much applications, sadly. The sale of anonymization is a strong approach to keep a reliable and safe the documentation at the same time. Uh, the models provided by PyTorch and Spacey name entity recognition public models are excellent at certain points. For, for create an anonymization solution. Actually, in the Spacey website, they have a really, really nice example of how to start with, with their models, and the English model is great. Uh, for the creation of custom models, as everybody knows, uh, we need real, a lot of data, annotated data, and in this case, we can reuse the MPA project uh, data and revisit that data and improve that data. And also, uh, we should define our tag list really carefully because private data is a really, really longer set. It can grow up as, as much as we can. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Oscar, for the great talk. Uh, we have a lot of time for Q&A. So if someone needs to ask anything, please use the mic. Uh, thanks, Ed. Uh, can I use this as a library, not as API? I'm sorry? Can I use it as a library, not as API? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Actually, the, if, if you use the, the space solution, you can use it as a library. You load the model, and you can start using it as a library and provide your, your own solution. Great. Uh, hello, my name is Secret, but I still have a question. Um, do you intend to go first than just substituting entities with your AI model? For example, if I have a text and all of my personal data is um, just redacted, you can still find out it's me because of the grammar, the vocabulary I use, similarity to other texts I've written. Is that the next step where you can actually change the text itself? I'm sorry, can you repeat? I was oh, sorry, is that? Ah, OK. No. Ah. Now it's OK. Now, now we're working. <laughs> right. Yeah, um, I was asking um, if you plan to go further than just substituting very specific entities like my name and my sex and my ethnicity, um, for example, the actual grammar or vocabulary that's used in the text. Yeah, yeah, you can actually do that. Ah, oh, that is awesome. <laughs> like it, thanks. Actually, one of the first and most common techniques in the name entity recognition is dictionary based 
name entity recognition, and that's also solved that. Uh, thank you for your talk. Uh, I have a question. As you mentioned, uh, SPICY is a great solution for uh, English language. But yes. If we take like you know, French or maybe Spanish, uh, the entity recognition becomes uh, more tricky. Uh, yeah. Do you think that by combining uh, anonymization with uh, um, synthetic data generation can enforce or sometimes replace? On, I don't know if you tried to, to play around with so yes, actually, yes. Actually, Spanish is my mother tongue, so this is the cause of my really, really bad English. So yeah, in those cases, I mentioned English model because they have really, really huge score. So the, the data set, the usage for that model it was really, really great. You can, they provide a lot of models, Spacey itself. You can also use Flare. There is another framework based on PyTorch but the numbers are not really great as a spaces, and Flare is kind of really expensive in matter of resources when you are deploying that model. Uh, usually on, in these cases, the best solution is a pre-trained model, custom model, with your own entities, with your own data, but that data should be tagged by uh, experts in that field. You can, actually, you can use the provided and models by Spacey, and beyond that, I don't know, use some techniques of man in the loop, and provide some kind of feedback in order to improve that data. Also, they provide uh, Spanish, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, even Japanese. They have even Japanese that, you know, that symbols are really, really difficult to, to identify entities on, on that language, but they handle that, so. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk. Um, I have a question. Like, what if the the document or the or the data set that you want to an anonymize contains multiple languages within it? So, like English and Spanish at the same time, or uh, any other combination? Like, do you do you see it as like you just run it multiple times with different models, or or is there another? Smarter you can use way? actually multiple language models. Okay, at the you, same time. At the same time, yeah. Oh. Actually, when you uh, provide service for translations, companies, uh, usually they send you a document with, with two or, th or more languages, so you, should be, you must be able to provide uh, several languages in, in, your, in, your, in your solution. So in that, that case, it's no, that is already covered as well. Yeah, so. I have another question. Uh, so the use cases that you showed us uh, uh, fit well for uh, textual data. And uh, do you have any, any idea or solution already for uh, tabular data, especially uh, what, what I'm interested in is the uh, ability to not reverse uh, you know, the data. Like uh, we had an example, it, I think it was Netflix who published uh, his tabular data for competition, which was anonymized, uh -huh. and then it, some with tricky manipulation. Yes, some actually, people yeah, actually, one of the solutions that we were currently working on is anonymization of databases. So as I said, in order to anonymize data, you should always uh, split that data in, it into chunks. So for instance, you will anonymize one cell, uh, speaking of tabular data. So there is no, no problem with that. You can anonymize uh, uh, split chats or presentations, uh, X, XML files. But that process is always from your side, not, not from the machine learning model. He only identifies entities, so that, that should be done by you. Thanks for the very interesting talk. Um, Thanks to you. I have a question about the MAPA project. They have okay. a model zoo, as uh, far as I know, for several different um, things, for example, legal tax, clinical tax, and so on. Um, uh -huh. Do you know if there are com uh, performance differences between these uh, topics? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you mean performance in order to the score of the models, or the yes. recognition? Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And which is working better, which is worse? No, I, I don't have that okay. answer on hand by now. <laughs> Thanks. But yeah, definitely. Yeah. And there is a lot of work to be done regarding those models and, and the data, annotated data, by the way. Hi, thanks for the great talk. Thanks, you. Might be a silly question, but can you reverse the anonymization if you don't have the original data? Sorry? 
Can you reverse engineer the anonymization if you don't have the original? Usually, data yeah. Usually, usually, when you anonymize a document, for instance, you you create like an index. Okay. When you identify the entity, for instance, your name, and you define an index for that entity, and that index is held by the end, the, the the same organization that actually anonymized that, that data, mm -hmm. in order to provide reverse engineering to that anonymized data. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much.